Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the Seed Library here at the Barrington Area Library. And this Seed Library contains a wonderful variety of seeds available to all the library patrons. In this Seed Library, you're going to find plants that you can plant into a garden, as well as seeds that you can put into containers and grow on patios and balconies. So this is a great opportunity for you to get started in growing. Here, when we begin at the top, you're going to find an assortment of herbs. Now, herbs are a great way to introduce variety and taste into all of our meals, and it's also great fun for kids to be able to grow, and as well as to have in a space that's close to your kitchen so that you can quickly go out and grab some flavorings for your meals. So what they have here at the Seed Library are basil, cilantro, Italian parsley, and dill. All of these herbs are fairly easy to start. They germinate very quickly and you can start them in the beginning of the growing season, which is usually around March and April. Um, some of these herbs require a little bit more sun and water, but otherwise they will grow fine in part sun to full sun. So it's a great way to get started. If you don't have a lot of experience in growing seeds or getting them started for your garden, Herbs are the great beginner um, level in terms of growing. So in terms of basil, there are so many varieties. There are hundreds of varieties of basil, but if you've never grown it before, Genovese basil is the best way to start. And then you're gonna go into cilantro, which if you like guacamole, or if you like cuisine from Asia or Latin America, cilantro is a great component to add to those meals. And once again, fairly easy to grow. It does like a little bit more sun, and it does require you know, some water and good drainage in order to grow so that you have a healthy plant, but it's not going to disappoint you completely if you only have part sun on a balcony. It'll still do fine. Now next we've got Italian parsley, dill. Italian parsley and dill are actually a little cold hardy. They'll continue growing even if there's a little bit of snow on the ground. So they're actually great plants to grow here in the Midwest where we get cold seasons very quickly and also a lot of temperature fluctuation. So both of these herbs will grow um, early, early spring and they'll continue to grow throughout the growing season in the summer. And then what's great is that you can harvest all of these come fall and dry them out. And if you dry them out, then you've got them to use all winter long. So please make sure you're checking out the herb section at the seed library. Next, we're gonna move on to our leafy greens. Leafy greens will also grow in part sun to full sun. And in fact, some of them may not do so well if you've got a really sunny spot. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. First, we're gonna talk about rainbow Swiss chard. Swiss chard is a wonderful plant to grow because you can eat the stalks and the leaves. Some people are a little reluctant to use the stalks, but if you chop them up fine, they're absolutely wonderful to eat in sautés. But the wonderful thing about rainbow Swiss chard is the color variety that you get. So not only is it delicious in a meal, it has a lot of aesthetic value to it. So it's a great plant to have in the garden, especially if you want a little bit more of a pop, like you just, you don't want just green everywhere you want some color but you may not get the sunlight you need for flowers well then you can get color from rainbow swiss chard um, next we've got a salad blend this will definitely grow in a container it germinates very quickly this is something you can put in a pot and you're going to have a salad blend within weeks that you can harvest and enjoy salad is something that we typically plant first into a garden um, it's something that you can start putting out in April and you know within two weeks you're going to have a great salad to enjoy and it can be grown in a garden area as well in fact one of the coolest trends is to have a lettuce lawn so you could actually cover a portion of your garden to look like a lawn but it's actually all lettuce loops next we're gonna move on to our wonderful kale. What we've got here at the Seed Library is white Russian kale. So white Russian kale is a kale that's very cold hardy. It's something that you can start, it takes a little while to start growing, but once it does, you really don't have to do anything to it. It'll be fine on its own. And the nice thing about kale is that it will grow in part sun. Even if you have a little bit less than part sun, which 
Part sun is typically about four hours of sunshine a day. If you have slightly less than that, kale will still grow. And kale provides wonderful nutrition to our meals, but the nice thing is, is that it'll also keep growing into the fall and into the winter sometimes. Sometimes you'll see like this great stalk of kale growing and there's frost on the ground. So very cold hardy, um, a wonderful plant to grow. And mostly it's the leaves that are edible, so you do have to take them off the stalks, otherwise the stalks get a little stringy and hard to eat. Next we're moving on to arugula. Arugula is one of my favorites because it kind of does dual purpose. You can use it as an herb, um, but you can also use it as a salad green. So arugula has a spicy, peppery taste to it, and the colder it is outside, like early spring, the sweeter it is. If you let it grow into the summer months, one thing is that it'll bolt super fast. So by that I mean it'll start growing flowers and then from flower to seed. So arugula is best enjoyed early spring or late summer, early fall. And it's a crop that you can keep planting again and again. So like let's say you planted it at the end of March and two weeks later, three weeks later, you harvest some to eat and then you notice that it's starting to get really warm and your arugula is bolting. Well, go ahead and take it out and you can plant it again. Arugula actually grows perfectly fine indoors too. So if all you've got is a windowsill, go ahead and plant some arugula, put it in a sunny window and you can enjoy it in your meals from the indoors. Okay, next we're going to move on to some container friendly plants that are edible, but you can also put them out into the garden. And these are actually some of our favorites when it comes to vegetable gardens. We've got tomatoes and peppers. So peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers are kind of like the standard go-to when it comes to a vegetable garden, especially for us, us here in the Midwest, because we've got that brief, but very warm growing period. And that's kind of what they really need. Peppers like a lot of sun. Peppers are also very slow to germinate. So if you were going to be starting your seeds indoors, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in another video, but if you're going to be starting your seeds indoors, peppers take some time. But once they get going, they also need a little bit more nurturing. Now, when you've got your plant established though, it'll be great. Um, they do require a little bit of cross-pollination, so you will have to put them outside so pollinators can get to them and pollinate the flowers. And then once that happens, you'll have plenty of peppers to enjoy that you can even freeze in the winter months to keep putting into your food to add that spice. Tomatoes, what we have here at the seed library are Roma tomatoes. And these are favorites for if you're creating sauces, um, you can also put Roma tomatoes into salads. They're kind of compact in size. They're not as small as cherry tomatoes, but they grow not as big as a beef steak or some of our heirlooms. So that being said, that also means they don't require a ton of nutrition, which some of our heirlooms do. Roma tomatoes are fairly easy to get started in growing. They germinate pretty well, um, and you can actually have them in a container, and you can add the basil, you can add a pepper plant in there. You, they will grow fine with arugula, too. Um, you know, all of those sun-intensive plants actually do okay, you know, together in a pot. So Roma tomatoes are a great way to start growing tomatoes if that's something that you've not done before. If you have grown Romas before, this is a great resource for you to come up and pick up some free seeds. Okay, so we do have some miscellaneous seeds at the bottom of the seed library and feel free to go through them. There's a bunch of different types of flowers that you can put into a garden. You can also put some of those flowers into containers if you have the right sun. Um, so some of those uh, flowers will require full sun and all of that information is listed on each one of the packets so as you're going through the seed library feel free to pick them up read the information on them and that'll tell you the growing requirements that they need to thrive and do their best next I'm going to move over to the other side of the seed library and that contains more of our garden loving plants which means that they require a little bit more space to thrive so here on this side what you're going to find is that we have a lot of flowers that have a lot of visual interest but also add a great habitat for pollinators. So at the top 
We're gonna start with the four o'clocks. This is a vine, um, and it grows beautifully on trellises. It'll grow over a fence. If you have a balcony on a patio, um, or you know you've got a deck or something like that, the four o'clocks do beautifully on that. You know, and it's a great way to get a constant flow of colors and flowers into your gardens. Next, we have nasturtiums, and we also have a variety of seeds that you will find in our teaching garden here at the Barrington Area Library. So in this seed packet you'll find flowers that you will see in bloom within the teaching garden and this kind of gives you the opportunity to mimic or imitate what we've got going on there and if you check out the website you'll see how beautiful the array of flowers get in the summertime. So a little bit about nasturtiums. Nasturtiums could actually work really well on that side as well in the container area. Nasturtiums are an edible flower. They, they taste like a little bit like arugula. It's got a little bit of a peppery taste to it. So the flowers are edible and you can add them to a salad, but the leaves are also edible. So it's a great plant to grow. Um, and then the pollinators. Bees love nasturtiums. You know, it's just such a great plant to have. And if you were gonna do a container, um, like let's say if I wanted to do, you know, a beautiful container that had edible plants, but also looked, you know, it looked really pretty. You could do a container with the Roma tomatoes, the basil. You could also add a little bit of, let's say arugula to kind of give a little bit of texture to the leaves. And then you could add nasturtium, which will trail off the sides of the pot. And the great thing about nasturtiums that I actually use it for a lot in my garden is that it provides nitrogen to the soil, which is a nutrient that tomatoes like to use to grow. So these will actually help your vegetables grow better. So nasturtiums are a wonderful addition to all kinds of growing spaces. Next, we've got zinnias, which are also one of my favorites just because they are so resilient. They will keep putting out flowers. In fact, this is a favorite of mine for a cut flower garden because the more you cut, the more they keep coming out. And they've got a really pretty variety of colors. It's kind of like a festival of colors. You've got like oranges and pinks and reds and yellows. So it's a really like lively plant to put into your garden. You can grow them in containers and they will do okay. You just don't get as many blooms. You get a little bit more of a, you know, just you'll get a beautiful plant and you'll get some blooms, you, but in a garden space, you get a ton of blooms. And like I said, the more you cut them, the more they keep coming. And they will actually keep growing into the frost season. So as soon as frost starts to hit, that's when you see the plant die off, which means you actually have a really long growing season with zinnias. Next, we've got some rutabecchia. Um, some of the varieties of this are native to Illinois, so it actually does really well here. It thrives. So if you have a garden space and put in rutabecchia, you'll notice it comes up with the beautiful yellow flowers fairly quickly. And then by year three, you're going to see a lot of rutabecchia <laughs> because it does spread um, and it's very happy here, but it also provides a source of nutrition in the winter time for a lot of our birds that don't have other things to eat so it's a great plant to put into your garden for our pollinators as well as all the other small critters that overwinter here in the Midwest so this is a great plant to check out next we're gonna go into some other of our flowers available here forget-me-nots stock and larkspur these are also actually flowers that I would put into a cut flower garden just because they look really pretty in arrangements and bouquets they take a little bit more finesse in growing. So when you're looking at the, the seed packets, definitely look over the requirements. What does this seed need to grow into the plant that I want it to become, right? So if you give it those things, it will do well. Next, we're gonna move on into one of my favorites, my absolute favorite, um, sweet peas. And the reason I love them so much is because of the scent. They are gorgeous. It's like having a perfumery in your garden. They are a little finicky. Um, it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a demanding plant. So you do have to start them earlier on if you're going to grow them from seed from the seed library. You have to start them probably end of February. 
so it's coming up on us. Um, so you're gonna take these, you're gonna soak them, you're gonna you know get them started in the seed starting mix or whatever you've got, and then once they start to grow, they require a good amount of nutrition and water. This is a plant that if you really want something to take care of and nurture and then give you great returns, that's a sweet pea. And then also once it starts growing, you have to one feed it with nutrition. So you have to give it a feed, you know, so some kind of plant food, um, you know, compost, whatnot, you have to feed it and you have to harvest them. You have to cut them. The more you cut them, the more you get. If you stop cutting them, they will stop flowering. So it is a, it is a plant that you have to take care of, but if you do do that, you're going to have an amazing, um, just constant supply of this beautiful scent in your arrangements. Next, we've got poppies, which are also stunning. And poppies are great in a garden because they're fairly hardy. They will grow very easily. And they have a really cool leaf texture to them, so it's a great thing to add for variety in your garden. And then, of course, that pop of color from the poppies. And one of the things that I love most about them is that once they're done flowering, the seed head is gorgeous. You can keep that seed head just growing in the garden. It's got this beautiful round seed head at the top, and it's just a, it's a really great um, visual kind of, you know, uh, element to your garden, especially in the fall time. You've got these beautiful round seed heads just kind of in and amongst your, your garden. So it's a great plant to grow in a garden space. Next, we've got common milkweed and our sunflowers. Now, common milkweed is a native to this region, and it's an extremely important native plant to this region. Common milkweed is the plant on which the monarch butterfly will lay its eggs. And so it's extremely important for the monarch butterfly that we all put common milkweed into our gardens. So it's really great that we have this available here at the seed library. Sometimes it can be hard to get these seeds, so it's pretty amazing that you would be able to just come here and grab some. Now, common milkweed will spread in your garden, so it just takes a little bit of maintenance to keep an eye on it, to make sure that it's not just taking over. Um, the flowers are really aromatic. They have a gorgeous scent to them, and they have this beautiful, it's like a puffball flower, so kids love them, and if you manage to get a monarch to lay its eggs on it, you'll see the monarch caterpillar crawling over it in the early summer, and it's awesome because those caterpillars are so much fun to look at. And then you know you're helping them too. So, and then sunflowers. These sunflowers are not the ones that grow like 10 feet tall. These are manageable. Um, and these sunflowers are also a great way to add that late growing season interest into your garden. And one of the best things you can do is actually leave them up. Don't take them down after growing season. Leave them up because they'll be a wonderful source of nutrition for all the birds passing through. You're gonna see your chickadees and your cardinals stopping to feast on those sunflower seeds. And then once they've feasted on all of them, they actually love to perch on top of the sunflower stalks. So this is a great plant to put into your garden if you wanna bring the birds in. And not to mention the bees go crazy for sunflowers when they're growing. So all around a winner. Next, we've got some other vegetables that you can put into your garden. We've got squashes. So there's the pumpkins, and then there's also this birdhouse gourd. Pumpkins will grow, obviously, Illinois, right? So like we're like the top pumpkin producers in the world. Pumpkins will grow fairly easily here in Illinois. So you can put them into the ground. They require space. They need to spread out, um, and once they start to spread out, you'll see them kind of take over. I actually really appreciate these plants because as the season gets cooler, what these leaves of the squashes do is they provide a little bit, or actually, I'm mistaken. It's actually when the season gets really hot. These leaves are really broad and they provide a little bit of relief to the soil dwellers underneath. They provide like a little bit of a cool, you know, um, just a, a bit of respite from that really hot late summer sun. And so it's a great way to protect those soil dwellers. And then you get fruit, you get pumpkins at the end of it that you can harvest for October. You can harvest them to eat. You can harvest them to use as food for wildlife. 
So these are such great plants to have in terms of habitat and also in terms of edible value for all of our wildlife, including ourselves. Next, we've got miniature popcorn and wild leeks. So wild leeks is another native here to the Midwest and here in Illinois. It's actually kind of endangered in certain spots just because it's being so harvested. It's being a little over harvested. So if you can plant that into your open space in and around your house, once again, look at the growing requirements. So if you've got that kind of growing environment for them, plant them in. You're not going to see them necessarily that first year. Sometimes it takes a couple years to kind of, you know, get some of these native plants really thriving where you're noticing them. Um, so it'll take a while for those to get established, but just know that you're doing a good thing because they're really important to our habitat um, and they do great things for our soil as well. And the miniature colored popcorn. Boy, are these fun to grow. One, because they grow super tall, like the stalks grow really fun and tall. Um, they are wind resistant, you know? So like you'll see them and there's gonna be, you know, like a wind storm coming through, but this, the corn is standing fine. And that's just the nature of the plant is that it's wind resistant. So you'll see the corn growing tall and the leaf texture is really cool to play with and it makes a beautiful sound as well. But then when the corn comes in, you see the, the silk strands coming out and kids just absolutely love to interact with this plant. And then not to mention, you get ears of corn. Now this variety actually gives you different colored corn. So you'll be able to play, you know, with all the different colors, you can harvest it. You can dry it out and use it as a decoration as well. So it's a great plant to throw in. Um, if you have uh, an area in your garden where you're trying to create a little bit of a visual barrier, Put in corn plants throughout the summer, you know, and you're gonna get these gorgeous tall stalks. Now, moving down, we've got beets and we have watermelons, as well as some other plants that you're gonna see in here. Um, the beets are wonderful to grow. You can put those in early spring if you wanna eat the greens just keep harvesting the greens. If you want to eat the, the root, you know, you want to eat the actual beet, you can actually keep harvesting the outer leaves and then it, the root will still continue to grow and then you can go ahead and harvest that at the end of summer to eat. So this is not one of those plants that you put in and then you have to just wait and wait and wait and wait and then you get one beet. This is a plant that you can put in and you can actually grow them in containers. You can put it in and just use it for the greens. The greens are gorgeous. They've got like maroon veining. Um, you know, they have a really good earthy taste, but not as strong as the beet itself. So it's a good green to grow. So you could either grow it as a leafy green or you can grow it to actually harvest the beets at the end of summer. So a really versatile plant and a vegetable. Lastly, we've got our baby watermelons. These are not your giant watermelons. You will not have to have, you know, like huge amounts of space to grow them in. One of the things about watermelons, no matter what size variety, they like really good draining soil. So if you are going to be growing them into a garden space, you want a place that doesn't have a lot of clay in it. It needs kind of a sandy soil to grow in. Um, so free draining soil, it needs heat. Watermelons love to be grown in that summer sun. So that's when you're going to see them really taking off. Um, and then once they begin to grow, you may have to protect them from critters because they're delicious. So, you know, you can put some, I know people that put, you know, different types of pepper, you know, on it or whatnot to try to keep the critters from getting to them before you can enjoy them. But so go ahead and check out our extension website and that'll give you some, some tips on how you can grow watermelon best. But the baby watermelons are fantastic to grow just because they don't increase in size, they stay relatively small and they are very sweet. You know, so after you're able to harvest them, um, it's very quick to enjoy. And it's a great way, especially if you have little ones that want to garden with you, it's a great way to provide those rewards, you know, that they got to plant the watermelon and then see this beautiful fruit come to be and then eat. 
So if that's it for our seed library. When you guys come here, feel free to check out all these drawers. Sometimes there's a variety within the drawer. Like I had mentioned about the miscellaneous drawer, there's going to be several different types of seeds in there. So in all of these seed packets, make sure you're reading the information on them so that you're once again doing the right thing for the seed. You're doing um, the right, you know, you're creating that right growing environment so that they thrive. And then that's it. And if you ever, you know, feel that there's something in here um, or that, that there's, there is something missing from here that you would like to have added, feel free to let the library know that, hey, you know, I'm really interested in growing this particular plant. Would you guys be able to get the seeds for it? You know, maybe for the next year, it'll be added to the seed library. So thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy coming out and visiting the seed library and get your garden started.